I'm Rachel Weed at Soul and Center Wesleyan Church. Several years ago, the youth pastor at the time wanted to liven up the youth areas, which was mostly the upstairs. And they were doing renovations there, but the stairwell, which we are currently in, was just this awful shade of sand. And he didn't want something so blah to be the connecting point to the fun work they were doing upstairs. And somehow the bug got around that I was creative, I painted, I did all sorts of fun crafts, really. And I can't even remember who it was, whether Pastor Tom or Pastor Mark personally approached me asking if I'd be willing to take on this project for the youth. I, I've flattered, honored, but what do you want? You tell me what it is you're thinking and we'll, we'll let you know, um, like, yeah, we like it, or could you do this instead? So that started taking home a bunch of pieces of scrap paper, doodling it, showing it to Pastor Tom and Pastor Mark, asking, okay, I'm thinking on this wall I can do this, this can go up here, this can go up there, and I was thinking about something going around here, and everything connecting, whether it be actual images, whether it just be blurs of color, and where we are presently is the finished result of that. So it was actually just the shape of the stairwell that got the ocean bit started. The lines of the waves line up with where the first platform goes down. So if you're at the middle and you go down, the further down the water you get. And above that is the sky and from there Everything changes. It goes from ocean, ocean creatures, the sky, the stars, planets, and then it completely changes as the sky comes up into geometric shapes. And then the colors become more bold and out there. They're not really supposed to be anything. Continue along, it's more geometric shapes, more hard angles, more bright, bold colors. You keep going up, it gets softer, more organic, flowy shapes until you get to the top and it's an actual image again of what is meant to represent the tree of life with you have your caterpillars, you have your butterflies. Well, some things just hit me. Some things you... I, I spent a lot of time staring at blank walls trying to think, okay, there's something in here. When is it going to show itself? Or how long am I going to stare at this same wall for so long and then have something come out of it? Um, I talked to friends, family, church members. This is what I'm doing. Do you have any thoughts? Verses to add, uh, representations of verses. Um, and of course, Pastor Mark wanted something for the Soul and Center youth. So that's, as you'll see in a little bit, where the title of it came from. The title actually didn't come along until I was just a few months from finishing everything. Um, I was having so much fun bringing together the color, the shapes, the different representations of the miscellaneous images that are all over the place. Some things have significance, some things don't. Like. <laughs> On the wall next to me, there is a ball bouncing up the steps. That's not supposed to mean anything. It was just fun. The title, The Unfinished Story, is what you could say from a metaphoric, artistic standpoint or just in the spiritual walk itself. That is what we are. That is what, from beginning to end, you could even say that even at the point when you die, your story isn't done. And I tried to represent that in at the base of the stairs and coming all the way up, everything is just packed with stuff. Whether it be a square, whether it be a cutout circle, whether it be an eagle, a sword, just a shape. And then the farther up you go, there's more empty space, more where the wall isn't touched at all. 
and that I ended up making into the, this you could see as a metaphor for life. It starts somewhere, it changes, it flows, it's crazy, it's all over the place, and yet it goes together. And yet, once you reach the top, there's still room to add a little bit more. You're not really done. After I initially gave Pastor Tom and Pastor Mark the doodles on paper and, okay, follow me, this is what I'm thinking for this part, this is what I'm thinking for here, this is what I'm thinking for this and that and the other thing, and as soon as I got the okay, then out came the big pencils and the sharpener and I started scribbling on the walls all over. And that process took a while both to get the idea, make sure that it was drawn okay, not get too many eraser smudges that paint might not stick to when you're done. And, you know, oh yeah, yardstick was my best friend in many of these geometric shapes because they're over three feet long. <laughs> yeah, for weeks, I came in here whenever I could and just drew on the wall. I scribbled everywhere to give myself an idea of what was gonna go where. But there was still activities in church going on at that time and kids like to touch the walls as they go upstairs. So I'd come back in thinking that, okay, I'm gonna do this, and then half of what I worked on was all smudgy, and I'd have to do it again. It got to the point where I had signs all over the place and was taping newspaper to the wall, please don't touch the walls, so I didn't have to keep redoing uh, <laughs> my base work. From the time that I first put my pencil to the walls and the project officially started, it was in the month of March of 2013. And between school, work, personal life, and the times and the afternoons I could get in here, it took me a little over a year to say, okay, this is what I wanted, I am done and that was in February of 2014. Yeah, hard to say exactly how much paint went into it apart from a lot, because as we look around, except for just a couple feet up from, well, from the ceiling, there's color everywhere. There is paint all over this place. Brushes, I did have a few that went by the wayside because you try to wash that stuff out of just a common bristle brush and it doesn't, so it gets too stiff, it gets discolored, you gotta toss it and start fresh. I used fine brushes, I used wide brushes, a couple of sponges, which were a one-time thing. As soon as you use it, it's almost impossible to clean wall paint out of. <laughs> yeah, I, you can even see the brush strokes and even tell sometimes if I smudged it with my hands, if I used a soft bristle brush or a paint roller or a wide four inch brush. And sometimes I don't like using something so indelicate as a wide brush, but some of the pieces here are really big. I would have been here for hours doing it with anything smaller. So I'm gonna take you from step one all the way through and give you detailed portions of each piece. As soon as you walk through the entrance door, the first thing you'll see, apart from another storage door in front of you, on your left is Herman the Squid. Don't ask me where his name came from, it just sounded cute, so I stuck with it. So, okay, down here, you're in the ocean. There's not a lot of stuff to do right here, so what can you do? Make a giant sea beast. And to add a fun twist on the squid, one, he's got these adorable anime cute, I'm um, adorable eyes, but also all 10 of his tentacles kind of change color into these fun neons, orange, pink, green, when the rest of them is just kind of this color. And the whips are, I had metallic paint and that was just so much fun, I couldn't not use it. <laughs> first idea and first step was to be at the bottom of the steps and rise your way out of the ocean. So here we are, 
the briny blue and all the sea creatures that come come with it painting while on a step was not easy <laughs> lots of bending over lots of hunching and trying to okay if i sit on this step how far up can i reach without it being uncomfortable all kinds of marine life i tried to incorporate both with what would be interesting and what i knew i could draw so at the bottom, you just have your seaweed and some rocks, a starfish, a cuttlefish, some sponges. I don't know if anybody actually knows what this is, but it's supposed to be a mola mola or sunfish. Jellyfish, the sluggy nudibranch, and at the top of the step is a hermit crab. Pop up from the ocean a little bit. Volcanic island, palm tree covered in Christmas lights. I don't know why it was just fun and Genesis 1, 9, and 10 about how the land was separated from the waters. So this is an island, the land is separated from the water. There's a shark fin over here, but over the years the paint got chunk, well, chunk of the paint got taken off so you can't really tell what he's supposed to be anymore. Other side of the step, but still in the deep ocean, little seahorse. Oyster with a giant pearl, blue ringed octopus coming down the stairs. Don't know what he's doing, but hey, he's doing it with conviction. Got a sea anemone. One thing I never got to do is define the tentacles, but there's a little clownfish peeking out. Bunch of waves up into the sky. This is supposed to be a thresher shark. They're known to completely jump out of the water for, I don't know why, but it looked cool. He's supposed to have a few more defining features, but that was a few other details that I never got around to. And of course, you're looking at the ocean, where else do you go? Above that, you get into the clouds. So you have light sky for the sky that we know, you get your clouds, and then above that is deep space. Now this was a pain in the butt to paint, because I can only reach so far on each step, so eventually it went like that for how far my arm could reach and I wanted it to be darker so it was a mix of different blues blacks and purples and the top <laughs> I had to stand at the top of the steps and reach down with both a paint roller and paint brushes so I could get it all and even then as you go around and see the stars the planets the shiny dots I didn't quite get everything because all I really had to get up high was a relatively small ladder and a couple of chairs. <laughs> so if you look up and see that there's absolutely nothing, it's not because, not for lack of trying, it's just the arm only reaches so far. Sky goes all the way around. Higher up you go, the more space, shooting stars, rocket ships you are, until you get to the first platform and then everything takes a rather dramatic change. Here we are at the top of the first set of steps. And just as the stairwell turns, the images take quite a few dramatic turns themselves. We were just in the ocean and then deep space. And now all of a sudden we go from shooting stars and jellyfish to lots of hard angles and a lot more bolder colors. So there isn't really a reason behind all these. Bold angles, bold colors, just make something to draw your eye in. But as we go from the top and work our way down, we get fun little shapes. I was really into <laughs> three-dimensional objects at the time, so I made sure that whether it be a triangle, rectangle, whatever it was, it was in proportion. All the sides, of course, had to be different. One, to show that there is some depth, and two, one color is just boring. And as they're falling, you can see they become a Tetris grid. I mean, like, really, who doesn't know of Tetris? <laughs> so here everything is just kind of falling in place. As said before, everything somehow connects to everything else. So as we go from this wall to the next one, you'll notice that the lines of the Tetris grids immediately line up to the next shape as we continue along the back wall. This isn't really supposed to be necessarily anything specific. I used a lot of painter's tape to get 
my nice straight angles. I just wanted a lot of more bold shapes, more colors, more angles, squares, triangles, just a fun jumbled mess of what's that supposed to be? I'm not sure, but I like it. You're coming up the stairs, you're going upstairs for your kid going to class, you're going up to the sound booth. There's a lot of stuff you see, but some things are deliberately subtle. Some things are deliberately hidden. And there's actually a little piece here that even if someone was looking carefully, I'm not entirely sure they would catch. And that was partly deliberate. Part of it was kind of like hiding an Easter egg, that it's something special and if you look, or it just might be a fun surprise even if you're not looking. This, there's a depth difference. And there is about a four inch gap between the top and the bottom. And from there, I painted John 316. Well, painting it was a pain in the butt because I kind of had to do it like this, and that's rather uncomfortable doing it all the way down, but I did it. And I wanted that verse hidden, one, because it is kind of symbolic because how often do you go through a day and you there are little things all around you that you're either blessed with, have simple messages, and it's always there, but you don't necessarily see it. And for most people, John 3.16, for God so loved the world is one of the most, well, if you never learn any other Bible verse, it's probably going to be the one that you will know. And it speaks volumes, and it should be obvious, but sometimes it is hidden, and almost sometimes it has to be in order for its discovery to really be special. So we've moved over, and now we're moving up. Lines, of course, connect because, as I said before, absolutely everything does to triangles and mountainous peaks, just for the heck of it. And, as well, yeah, the painting process was fun for this one because, as you can tell, my arm reach only goes so far. I stood on a lot of chairs and even had to maneuver a small ladder up in here in order to get up high enough. The colors are pinks, oranges, and yellows, a little bit of red for, I was going for, you could say it's either a sunrise or a sunset. It's beginning, it's ending, it's starting, it's wrapping up, kind of up to personal choice. But altogether, these are very warm colors. A bright, cheery, oomph sort of feel. Soul and Center Youth was in white, the most basic color, but on top of that are these fun rainbow ones. Everything can show up here, everything can stand out in its own little way, even if it's just a little flick, just like the kids here. It was, I can't even remember who suggested it, but I, you have two words with, two, with a T in it, why don't you just, okay, you said you wanted to put a cross in there somewhere, why don't you just line it up so the T in center and the T of youth line up like, oh, I like it. I like it very much. Let's do it. And not forgetting the feathered friend in the corner, a song that we don't actually really hear much anymore um, is from Isaiah 40, 31, well, 30 and uh, 31, uh, Everlasting God. You do not faint, you don't grow weary, you raise me up on wings of eagles. That was really big at the time in our worship music. And just saying that made enough of an impression that, okay, I gotta find an eagle reference picture because that will be awesome. I have an empty space, I need to fill it. And I can incorporate that verse in a banner that he's flying off with. We're a little more than halfway through. We just started at the peaks of Soul and Center Youth, and as I said, and where the, you can see now, how do these two little things connect? Ha, well, I've got this little peak that started here, and its end curved around in from a harsh triangle to an organic shape. So we are changing everything up once again. That little curly cue is actually 
I was thinking of Curly Hill from Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. Shame on me, I know. <laughs> and then everything else kind of explodes into these swirly, curvy, smoothed edge, not really sure where it's going, fluid motion, somethings. I really don't know what they are, but they were fun. <laughs> I really like organic shapes, just the way that things move so fluidly, how the edges are soft, and I had a lot of fun with this. I didn't know what these things are supposed to be, but they branched off. I got to use lots of different colors, and there's a snail. I, again, don't know where his inspiration came from, but he's there. <laughs> Everything goes back up kind of into a blue sky. Again, it only went up as far as my arm or the brush roller could reach on standing either a chair or a ladder. Continues going all swirly, all kinds of different contrasting colors, some complements, which the colors draw on each other or contrast. They're so different, they just keep playing off of one another. And down below is a little ledge. Well, that ledge looked lonely as I was painting. Do I just give it a little bit of color? Do I make it multiple colors? No, this is in a church. So we are gonna go with a Bible scene. So as you go left, to right across the ledge, there is a little mound, and the mound, this is Noah's Ark story. So there is the ark on the mound, a bunch of little animals coming on the ark, and then it starts to rain, and then there's the ark on the water. The ark is still on the water in the next panel, but it hasn't, it's no longer raining. There's a little white, it just looks like a smudge to be honest, but it's supposed to be the dove. After that, uh, the, Land has appeared again. Next, the door is open. The animals are gone to their next stop. And of course, there is the rainbow. Next stop. I already explained the crazy, fun, organic colors and shapes. And once again, everything connects. So this fun purple arm, it changes color. What is it? And then it starts to level out a little bit. So do all these squigglies. What do they become? Becomes more of an actual scene. We have mountains and trees, fields and flowers. Down at the base of the steps, we have what look like tree roots and correctly they are. I have big scene here of, you could either say, well, figurative of the tree of life, or this could be the actual Garden of Eden tree of life. I even have a little apple in here. So someone had just spoke of the tree of life. I don't even know who they said it or who said it or what context it was in, but wait a second. I like that. Now, where can I put it? So at the top of the stairs is where it ended up. Beautiful flowers, butterflies, another, yeah. I was thinking that all the youth at the time could sign their name somewhere on it, but uh, that idea was kind of, eh, we have a lot of kids and they're not always going to be here. We're going to get more. That would be a very long, continuous process. So we didn't. Some of these, <laughs> the flowers and the butterflies were really good to try to get rid of excess paint as I'm working on other stuff. Some of these, they weren't intended to be patterned or spotted. The flower centers weren't necessarily meant to be two-toned, but I had enough on my palette of other colors that, okay, this is not enough to use for anything big, but still too much to throw away in good conscience. So look around, see what, okay, I'll just touch this up and touch this, and this will have a centerpiece, and these will have a couple of dots. And I try not to waste anything, so that is how some of these, you think it's done on purpose, but it's actually because I didn't want to waste anything. You've got the other side, you've got the walls, inner part of the step. What are you going to do with that? Because it's not exactly big, you can't do a lot of, well, I'm pretty sure I could have, but I didn't, a lot of details. So as said before, there's a ball bouncing up the step for no other reason than the ball doesn't bounce up the steps, so let's do it anyway, just because, why not? <laughs> the sword has Ephesians 6, 14 through 18, which is the verse explaining the armor of God, the 
sword, the helmet, the um, belt, the boots, but I just put a single sword to kind of represent that whole thing because I'm not entirely sure how to draw a lot of those things without looking at references forever. So it saved on time and got the point across all the same, I hope. Here we have rainbow flames. You start at red, you go up and it changes. But as you get to the blue, something else kind of changes as this entire theme has kind of been. It's all connected, but it all becomes something else. Your fire kind of tones down, the edges get a little less sharp, and the blue blends into purple when you're doing a rainbow. Of course, you're gonna connect that way. But as you can see more up here, it's actually supposed to be paint spilling out of a bucket, and it goes down that way. So we've reached the end. From the bottom to the top, here we are. So is this it? Is this where the story ends? Well, as said before, this is the unfinished story. More so on this side, you can see where things stop being detailed. I could have put the sky and more butterflies up top, but I didn't. Why? Because that piece isn't done. And up here, you're coming up, you're going to the classroom. I have very rarely ever seen this door shut. It's always open, which that could say a lot. One, it's convenient. Two, it's always an open door. Anyone who ever wants to come through is more than welcome. So I thought in kind of the sense of artistic symbolism or just spiritual symbolism as it is, I said this was the unfinished story. And as... God is the ultimate creator. You could also parallel that to what an artist does. They take something from their mind, their heart, soul, imagination, sometimes all at once, and pull it together to try to say something. And in this, I tried to share a little bit of my story as well as the spiritual walk as a whole. So in the sense of like when I was little I was hoping that um, when I got to heaven God would let me paint the butterfly wings and sunsets and jealous because he was the ultimate artist because he got to do that so here we have different dripping paint brushes and paint buckets up here it's just color it is something coming together but we don't see what it is yet that is unfinished but that doesn't mean that all this random brush stroke mess, given a little time, given a little work, won't become something. And the final image is of a hand reaching toward this ambiguous light. And as it's reaching, it is being created by a paintbrush. Your journey is never quite over. Even if you have a direction, you not necessarily, you might not reach it, you might not reach it in the way you meant to, but the entire time, the arm is not finished, but the work is not done. Creating this mural took over a year to complete, and in and on these walls, I feel like I've put a lot of myself into this mural. And part of the drive was not only because it was fun, but I knew I was doing it for the church family, that I was doing it for the youth, because sometimes go being dragged to church isn't any fun. So I know that here at Seoul and making things fun and making the Word of God exciting is something that we strive for and a bright, beautiful entryway into those classes and on that journey, I was and still am proud and honored to be a part of that. Unfortunately, this is not going to last for much longer. So while the piece may be entitled The Unfinished Story, this story does in fact have an ending.